Well, good evening. Thank you for joining in with Word Studies with Pastor. This is something that uh, we usually do on Wednesday evening as we get together to study God's Word. But due to some of the circumstances of things that are going on right now, we're not uh, gathering together on Wednesday evenings for service. But I wanted to continue to share the Word of God with you in any means that I possibly could. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into a study that I have been involved in now for several weeks here on Wednesday night, a study that deals with the subject of faith. Now, everyone knows the value of faith, of what it takes to walk knowing that God is alive and well. As a matter of fact, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we know that faith is very important to our walk. Now with the circumstances of things that goes on in our lives throughout our lifetime, we know that it takes faith to get through one day to the next day. I've often said God didn't promise us we never have any ups or downs. As a matter of fact, Life is filled with those. Sometimes things are going good. Sometimes they're not going so good. But faith in God is what gets us through. And so I'm going to talk to you for just a little while, probably not as long as I do on Wednesday night, on the subject of faith. Now, last Wednesday, we were dealing with faith, the anchor that holds. In other words, faith in God assures us that it doesn't matter how rough the storm is. It doesn't matter what kind of storm is. Faith in God will get us through it. We've got to understand that and we've got to know that, that faith in God will get us through it. I shared some words a couple of weeks ago uh, of Brother Smith Wigglesworth. He, he said this. He said, it is a blessed thing to learn that God's word can never fail. Now, isn't that wonderful? God's word can never fail. In other words, if God said it, God's going to do it. You see, that's just who he is. The character of God makes no allowances for him to lie. He's a God that if he says it, he keeps his word. Then he went on and said, never hearken to human plans. God can work mightily when you persist and believe in him in spite of discouragements from the human standpoint. Now, I like this. I'm not moved by what I see. I am moved only by what I believe. No man considers how he feels if he believes. The man who believes that God has it doesn't go by his feelings. Love those words. I'm not moved by what I see, but I'm moved only by what I believe. And what I believe comes from God's word. God said, I'll never leave you. God said, I'll never forsake you. God said, heaven may pass, earth may pass, but his word never passes. And with that word, faith is built, all right? Because it also says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I've been talking about that, the need of faith, how faith will get you through. Now, I don't have time to go through the different sessions uh, that, I, that I've covered over the last two or three Wednesday word studies, but what I want to talk about this evening is the fact uh, that faith works and we can see it in action. In other words, we take note of what other people have gone through, what other people have faced, and we zero in on how they got through their particular situation. And I don't think there's a better place to find an example of God keeping his word and of people walking by faith than in Hebrew, Hebrews 11 and 15. Now notice what it said, talking about the patriarchs. He said, these all died in faith. And notice, not having received the promises. In other words, God said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what's going to happen. 
and it's going to happen because of you. God gave a promise to them. We'll go back to Abraham. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, but Abraham didn't see that. No, but God kept his word. And we know now that the seed of Abraham has touched the multitudes worldwide. But it goes on further and said, not having received the promises, but here's the key, but having seen them afar off. In other words, God said, there, there, there are people who I gave a promise to and they know they did not see it in the natural. They did not see it happen in their lifetime, but they saw it afar off. Now, that's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, you have two eyesights. You have the natural eye and you have the eye of faith. They did not see what God said was coming uh, with that natural eye in their lifetime, but they saw it nonetheless. Faith says, if God said, I'm going to have a son, if God said, there's going to be many nations, if God says, I'm going to see blessings, uh, then God will keep his word. Now, I want everyone listening to me right now. I want you to know that if God has ever given you a promise, he's going to keep his word. It may not mature in your lifetime, but it will mature in time. Notice this, they saw it. In other words, they, they, they had a, a vision and they, 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 they saw what was going to happen. And then it said they were persuaded. In other words, they were convinced that it was going to happen. Why? Because God had said it. Not only were they persuaded, but they embraced it. In other words, they, they, they started saying, listen, listen, God said, I'm going to prosper. God said, my children are going to be saved. God said that my family's going to be blessed. And I know beyond a doubt that God's going to do what he said he'd do. And so they began to embrace it. And reality, it said, and they confessed that they were strangers. They were pilgrims on earth. In other words, they began to confess what God said. They began to confess that they were a nation. They began to confess that they were going to inherit or reach a promised land. They began to say exactly what God said and began to stand on it. So what am I saying? Brother, I'm here to tell you, if God said, I'll never leave you, if God said, I'll never forsake you, faith says God will keep his word. If God says, uh, by those stripes we are healed, you can bank on it. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Uh, these people, these patriarchs, these that received various promises did not see them come to pass in their lifetime, but they saw them anyhow. They confessed them anyhow. They were persuaded of them. They believed in them. And what I want you to do is to do the same thing. I know we're going through struggles. I know that there's times that troubles come. I know that we don't always understand everything that is happening in our lives. We, we wonder, God, why did you let this take place? We don't always understand that, but know this, God won't leave you. God won't forsake you. God won't turn his back on you. He'll always be there. So embrace the word of God. Embrace the promises of God. Embrace it and say, it is mine. Going back to what Brother Wigglesworth said uh, when he made that statement, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved only by what I believe. What do I believe? What God's word says. What do I believe? What, what do I trust in? What God's word says. That's why causes me to know he won't ever leave me and he will never forsake me. Notice what Mark 22 and 23 says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that what 
so that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's the word of God. That's God saying, listen, start believing it. Start stating it. Don't doubt what God's word says. Have faith because everything God does uh, hinges on those words. Uh, he shall have uh, whatsoever he saith uh, because he believes he's going to have it. Mark 11 and 4. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, here it is, believe that you receive them uh, and you shall have them. You say, but pastor, you just don't understand what I'm going through. You just don't understand what I've been through. You just don't understand what's going on in my children, in my family, in my body, in my finances. Maybe I don't, but there's one thing I do understand. God loves you. And faith will cause that mountain to get out of your way if you will just begin to stand on the word of God. Faith is our foundation. What is a foundation? Faith is our anchor. What is an anchor? An anchor is what? What holds the ship in place when the storms are raging, when all hell is coming against you, you still don't give up. You don't let anybody talk you out of it. You don't let anybody cause you to give up. You don't let anybody turn cause you to turn your back on what God is saying, folks. Faith is that anchor. We're going to have storms. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have problems. We're going to hear negative people saying negative things things, but what does God say? What has God said to you? Listen to me. Faith is the anchor. You're going to make it through whatever you're going through and whatever you face with. Uh, I'm telling you from experience, I've lived for God longer than many of you have been alive, uh, and God has never let me down. He's never turned his back on me. Oh yeah, he's been late a few times. Well, not really, but late according to my time clock, but I found out something a long time ago. God doesn't God God doesn't move according to my wants or my time. He knows when I need what I need, and he knows when I need it. And the key to all of that is I just I, I just can't ever give up. I've got to stand on what God's word said. Somebody listening to me right now, God's promised you something. You've been going through, oh, 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 excuse the vernacular, but it seems like hell on earth, and you began to wonder, is God going to do it? Did he say he would? Does the word validate that he said he would? What I've just read to you says it would. And so if God said it, he's going to do it. Don't you dare give up. You're just about to turn a corner. Things are just about to change. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. God is going to move for you. I just feel that presence and that power of God right now. Say, watch it, preacher. You're going to get carried away. Carried away nothing. I've been carried away for a long time now. Not going to give up on God. Not going to give up. I'm going to keep my faith in him. I want every one of you to listen to me. God loves you. God's on your side. We're going to get through this stuff that is going on in our nation and even around the world today. You say, preacher, aren't you afraid? Why in the world should I be afraid? If God be for me, then who can be against me? God has made a way for us to get through what Ever, whatever life dishes out to us. So faith in action. We've got men and women that have seen God move and God deliver all down through time. And we, we, we can hold on to what God says. Uh, and I'm just so thankful that he is a God uh, that never leaves us and never forsakes us. Now I know I've kept you for a while, but I just want you to understand that I believe you're going to make it. I believe you're going to be victorious. I believe that you're going to see light at the end of all of this darkness in your life. And I believe that what God told you he's going to do, he's going to do it. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Hold on by faith. Hold on by faith. God will come through. Let's pray. Father, thank you for allowing me to share this little bit of word this evening. Now, God, I know that there are people right now that they're bothered by certain circumstances and things that are going on in their lives. Lord, they've been shook to the core, but your word 
Your word said ask and you'll receive. And so God, I'm asking for healing. I'm asking for blessings. I'm asking for deliverance. I'm asking for hope. A hope that is founded on you and none other than you. And I'm believing you, God, for it to happen. And I'm praising you in advance. I'm glorifying you right now that you're doing exactly what you said you would do. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Let me tell you, I love you. I praise God for you, and I want you to keep your faith in him. Now, we're going to be doing this on Wednesdays uh, until we, 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 we get back together on Wednesdays. We're kind of uh, waiting until we see how things are going to go, but I'm going to be bringing you the word of God about 15 to 20 minutes in word studies with pastor, going to take you into some different places in God's word and want to encourage you. I don't want to tear you down. I want to build you up. I left a thought the other day on Facebook that said, uh, you know what? It's easy to tear something down. It's a lot harder and work intensive to build it back. So I want to build you up. I want to encourage you. I believe the word of God will do it every single time. All right, but keep your faith going. Keep your faith going. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. God said, I'm going to supply whatever you have need of. All right. Also, let me say to all of our church family, we will be having service Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to go by the various mandates that they have established for us to go by, but we want to be here for a little while in God's presence. I understand, I understand what's been requested of us, and that's why we're calling off all of our extracurricular activities and bringing it down to just that in gathering on Sunday morning, and one of the main reasons is because I feel like we all need a choice as to whether we go into live teaching of God's words or not. It's really your choice. We're going to have it, and uh, all the details will be presented Sunday morning. But just want those of you that maybe did not receive my call today that are part of my home family to understand we will be gathering at 10 o'clock this Sunday morning for a great time in God's presence. But there will be some policies where we will be adhering to what they are suggesting uh, throughout this difficult time. All right, going to go. If you have any questions whatsoever about Messenger Church, maybe you're listening, you don't know any, a lot about us, and you live in the Fenton, St. Louis area, you want to know something about us, give us a call, 636-343-2255. Somebody will take your call, and we'll let you know that it's the Spirit that makes the difference. God love you. I love you. Praise God for you.